Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the first video in our PySpark series. In this video, I'll be introducing you to the PySpark, what it is, why it is important and how it is used uh, in our real world data processing. Let's dive in. First of all, what is PySpark? PySpark is a Python API for Apache Spark, a powerful open source engine for big data processing. Apache Spark is very well known big data processing framework which can handle both kind of data the batch data and the real time data it can be used for stream processing batch processing right yeah so we, we have multiple ways through which we can interact with the apache spark one is the, the underlying language is scala but we're going to talk about py spark which is a python api for apache spark if you're good in python if you know how to use python then this is the tool for you for processing the big data so it allows you to write the spark applications using python instead of java or scala as i've already stated that the, uh, the Scala is the underlying language for the Apache Spark, but if you want to use the uh, Python because it's one of the widely used programming language as well as it's, it's used for data analysis as well, you can go for it and you can use Python instead of Java or Scala. So with a PY Spark, we can uh, process the huge volumes of data efficiently across multiple machines in parallel. It's a basic principle of uh, big data right so when we talk about big data we always talk about the data which is available in multiple partitions uh, we have to process data parallelly so that we can increase the uh, we, we can we can do the things in uh, in lesser time right it's a fundamental principle of big data this distribution and parallelism so with the py spark we can handle the huge volume of data efficiently easily and in lesser time so it supports uh, batch processing, real-time streaming, SQL queries, and machine learning all within the same ecosystem. Like in the case of Hadoop, when we talk about Hadoop, we have a multiple uh, tools available like Hive. We are having Hive, Apache Pig. We have HBase, right? They, they, are, they, are, they are different tools for different use cases, right? The same way, uh, in the case of Apache Spark, we have a multiple modules available which can, which we, which you can use for doing the batch processing, the real-time streaming, the SQL queries, and machine learning all within the same ecosystem. And we don't have to install multiple tools. They're all available in the same tool, right? So why use Apache? Why use this Apache Spark or PY Spark? So first reason is scalability. We, it can process the petabytes of data across clusters. So it can easily handle the data. Uh, scalable like scalable means we, we can, how easily we can increase or decrease the uh, uh, like uh, resources based upon the given situation so we can easily process the petabytes of data across clusters second speed because of its in-memory computation it uh, that uh, it uses that that in-memory computation meaning is it keeps the data in ram so it uses in-memory computation optimized execution plans so which makes this uh, faster than hadoop it has been proven that it is uh, pretty much faster if we compare with the Hadoop, right? The uh, the, the developers of Apache Spark, uh, M. Zahari and his team already written in their research paper that how uh, this uh, Spark is so, so uh, faster than the Hadoop. Third one is ease of use because we're gonna use Python and we all know that Python is very easy to work with, right? So Python simplicity has been now, uh, we can say it's been mixed with the Spark's power. So you can utilize the Spark's power by using or writing the queries in Python. Third, last one is we can handle multiple types of data, right? We all have learned this in a big data V's also, like uh, we can handle multiple types of data, the variety, it can be structured data, unstructured data, or a streaming data. So key components of PY Spark. The key components are we have Spark Streaming, we have Apache ML, uh, Apache Spark ML Lib, GraphX, ML Lib stands for Machine Learning Library, GraphX for Graph Computing, the Spark SQL and Data Frames for handling structured data. Then we are having Spark Core API. You can see what is Spark Core API, what are the use cases? The Spark Core API is a heart of Apache Spark. It gives you the tool to work with the big data across many computers. So what it do, right? So you can think this Spark Core API as the base of a building. All the other parts like Spark SQL, MLlib and streaming sit on the top of it. And with the Spark Core API, we can load data, we can transform data, we can distribute the data or we can recover for from the errors automatically. So we have a multiple languages through which we can interact with the Apache Spark. But for this series, we're going to talk about only the Python. So let's see the PY Spark in action, right? So how we can, uh, like, uh, I'll just show you a little demo here, like how we can make use of PY Spark, right? For that, I'm going to uh, go go to my, uh, this PowerShell, and I'm going to open up the PY Spark. So PY Spark can be opened up by typing PY Spark. 
Uh, the installation process I'll be discussing uh, in separate video uh, because this is just an introductory video. I'll be just uh, showing you how we can uh, write some basic queries in uh, PySpark. Okay. In this uh, case, I will be showing you how we can uh, uh, do this uh, basic data loading stuff. Right? Let's do it. So for that, we have already opened up the this PySpark. First of all, I have to import one thing which is called Spark session. So you can see uh, from pyspark.sql import spark sessions. The spark session is nothing but an entry point of Apache Spark, right? Uh, you have to initialize that in order to work with the Apache Spark. It's an entry point of the uh, Apache Spark, okay? So I'm importing this uh, spark session, right? Afterwards, I'm gonna uh, uh, specify who's my master, what's my app name, okay? So spark session dot builder, okay, spark session dot builder dot uh, app name it's it can be any app name i am writing here my app name is intro to spark intro to spy spark okay and this is app name and then we can write get or create if the spark session is available already get it otherwise create it okay get or create all right done Okay, afterwards, uh, once we have this, okay, so it's, we already have this existing Spark session available, right, go for it. Now we're gonna uh, write a very basic syntax, Spark dot read dot CSV, okay, and we have to give the complete path. I'm gonna load one file, which is iris. This is the data set I'm gonna loading. It's available in my D drive, okay. So then we can write iris dot csv and then we can write comma header true means i have to include the uh, my column names then infer schema true meaning is i have to has to detect the data types of its own means whatever data type the columns are having it should include that automatically infer schema equal to true that's it. All right, let's see if it's working. I press enter here, and in this case, you can see it's working. So let's see the output with the df.show, and you should see the output. So this is a basic little demo to just to show you uh, how this PY Spark works, right? Before we end up this video, let me show you one more thing. What's our different companies that are using this uh, Apache Spark, right? And what's their use case? You can see it's already available on their official website, the Powered By, in which they have shown all the companies and the use cases. Like, let's suppose they're showing this UC Berkeley AMP Lab. Uh, you can see they're using a variety of open source projects on Spark. If I go further, you can see that uh, this Conquer company is using Spark for travel and expenses, analytics and personalization. So they're all the companies you can see it's a long list and they're using uh, this Apache Spark or this PY Spark and they have their own use cases. I hope from this short little video, the very first one, you have understood that what's Apache Spark and what is PY Spark and how we can make use of it, right? So I'll be showing you the rest of the things in next video. Thanks for watching guys, see you next video.